I get asked all the time about walks. And no, I'm not just talking about that oversized skillet they use to cook your general so chicken. Today, we're talking about Warrant Officer Candidate School. Let's get gnarly. So for those of you who don't know, the Warrant Officer Pipeline is pretty much two parts. You go to Warrant Officer Candidate School, and at the completion of that, that's where you become a Warrant Officer. But you're not branch qualified at the end of WOCs. You still have to go on to your MOS specific Warrant Officer basic course. Now we can talk about that in a separate video. Today I want to talk to you about WOCs, because that seems to be the one thing that people want to know about and could potentially hang a lot of people up on the path to becoming a warrant officer. So I wanted to kind of help you manage your expectations and know what to expect uh, going into uh, a school that is not super hard, but it'll get you if you're not ready for it. So the first thing I want to talk to you about uh, concerning walks is preparation. You need to really do the work and be prepared to go to walks. This is not a school that you can just show up and have some of the items on the packing list and do no prep and just walk on and kill it. You really need to really manage and 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 take control of your uh, your 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 finances and your your life before you just go off to the school. Because remember, becoming a warrant officer is a drastic change in the trajectory of your career. This is not I no shade to becoming an NCO, but this is a lot bigger and also a lot more jarring than going from, say, specialist to sergeant, or even captain to major, I'd say. This is one thing becoming something else, and you need to give it that acknowledgement in your own mind, I think. But preparing yourself for the walks basic course pipeline is very important. What does that mean? Uh, depending on how long your warrant officer basic course is, you face a lot of financial considerations. Your family uh, is looking at some, some displacement. There's a lot of times where you might find yourself uh, needing to figure out where your family is going to live, where you're going to live. Are you going to bring them with you? Uh, where are your household goods going to be shipped? The WOCS basic course pipeline can take anywhere from a few months, two, three, four months, to over a year. So you really need to think about the effect that this path is going to have on your family and on your finances. In addition to that, you need to be cognizant of uh, your DTS or your travel considerations. Are you going to walks in basic course TDY in return? Meaning you're going to go to walks, maybe return to the unit that you got selected from and then go to basic course? Or maybe you're TDY in route, meaning you're going to leave the unit as an NCO, never go back there. You're going to go to walks, go to basic course, and then go to a completely different unit. You need to be thinking about that stuff. You need to be thinking about your voucher on the back end. How much leave are you going to take between walks and basic course or between basic course and reporting to that, that first duty station? These are things that can really cause you a lot of headaches and heartache if you don't think about them until it's time, if that makes sense. Another big thing dealing with the preparation for the Warrant Officer Candidate School is the packing list. This is huge because there's a lot of items on this list that at first glance seem kind of silly and you might think, well, I, sh I don't need that. I haven't needed that my entire career. An example on the packing list, at least when I went to the school, was the oversized black trench coat that used to, you used to wear with your dress uniform. In 14 years in the military, I still have not had it mandated to me that I need to wear that issue item. It's I don't know why we still have that. It's not that it's not a sharp, you know, issue item. It looks good. Anyway, that was on the packing list for walks. And because I foolishly had thrown mine out or gave it to someone else, I had to go and purchase a new one in order to show up to walks with a completed packing list. So make sure you adhere to the packing list because there's a lot of items that are on there strictly for uh, inspection and display purposes. And if you don't have them and you're found to be deficient at walks, they can send you to the house. They can kick you out of the school for that. So make sure that you bring those items with you. It's a big deal. 
The last thing I'll tell you in uh, being prepared for walks is to make sure your finances are in order. I kind of mentioned that earlier, but there's a reason why they call it the thousand dollar dot. Even if you don't have to buy or reconstitute any of these issue items that you got rid of or pawned off during your enlisted years, you are still going to have to pay for alterations to your dress uniform. There's class shirts, class coins, class hats. There's a social event. There's a field trip. There's a lot of stuff at walks that are going to cost you money. And it generally shakes out to several hundred dollars. So you need to be prepared for the financial impact of becoming a warrant officer. Should it all be free? Probably, but it's not. The second big thing I want to talk to you about walks has to do with conduct. As a warrant officer candidate, you're going to find yourself in a pretty big mix of personalities and uh, 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 career backgrounds. Now, the preponderance of people at walks are like me. They're sergeants, staff sergeants, sergeants first class who are just trying to take their career to the next level, probably in their late 20s or early 30s. And they all more or less are in the same age bracket uh, and behave pretty similarly. The next population is going to be some of your more senior people who are also taking their career in a different direction, but they're doing it from maybe being a command sergeant major or being a former major or captain. There's going to be a few former senior non-commissioned officers and former officers at walks with you, and they might have a harder time adjusting to being treated like a private again at walks. That is something you need to understand is that at walks, it's not a gentleman's course. You are going to be treated like a private again. You are not going to have all these rights and, and abilities to just run around and, and leave when you want to and co go and come as you please. You're going to be restricted to barracks. And in a lot of cases, you're gonna to have to write memos in order to get basic privileges like having coffee. You don't just get to have coffee at walks. You have to, your morale officer has to put in a memo and state why the class uh, deserves to have caffeine rights. That's a thing. Conduct comes into play when you put all of these personalities in one place. Student leadership at walks is enormous. You are going to have to lead as well as be led at walks. For some people, it's easier to lead than be led. For me, I had been in the army six or seven years, so taking orders from people wasn't something that was super out of place for me. And being a private at basic training was still kind of a fresh memory at that point. So I had a lot of, a, I, had, I had an easier time just falling in and doing what people asked me to do. Hey, candidate green, go clean the latrine. Okie dokie, no problem. I would have a harder time doing it if I had been a 14 year sergeant major. You got to think about some people are coming to this school having been the head honcho. They were walking up and down, you know, lanes at the motor pool, making sure the vehicles were inspection ready. They were walking up and down ranks, making sure people got their haircuts over the weekend and stuff. Now they're here getting treated like a private. To those people, I want to say you need to remember where you're at and you need to remember what you're there to do. Don't come into the school thinking because you've had more time in service that you're going to have an easier time or that the TAC officers are going to go easy on you. They're not. So just make sure you come into it humble and check your ego at the door because the people who have a hard time doing that sometimes don't make it through the course. That's just a fact. The last thing I want to talk to you about is the physical portion. I want to be clear, this school is not sapper school. It's not ranger school. Uh, but we do lose people on things like ruck marches and uh, land navigation and even PT. If you come to this school and you're not 100% in one of those areas, meaning you struggle to you know, pass the run or pass one of the components of the ACFT, or you can't ruck march very well, you need to do some work in those areas before you go to the school because they're graded very strictly at walks and if you can't perform, you're not gonna slip through the cracks. You'll be sent back to being a non-commissioned officer. So make sure you're squared away in the PT domain. Other than that, it really is just another school. Like I said, it's not ranger school. As long as you're a soldier and can do soldier stuff, you're gonna be okay. Basic course, a little more challenging in its own way. It's a little more cerebral than physical, 
uh, but it comes with its own set of challenges. Uh, but I hope you found that helpful. I get asked a lot about what is walks like, what to expect at walks. I might take a deeper dive into that someday, but for now, hopefully this gave you at least a foundation of what to expect. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch me on a live stream sometime. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see you soon. <laughs>